okay, phase diagrams. Uh, okay, now, I know you saw me mess this up once. Solid, gas, liquid, not too hard. Don't forget the critical region. Uh, I noticed uh, some of you had a little problem with that on the homework. So anyway, <laughs> there it is. There's not really a heck of a lot to say. Oh, don't forget. Um, now this is going to come up a lot today. Uh, Gibbs phase rule, pressure and temperature plus components. Uh, the way a component would work is that it would be like an axis coming out at you. And so today we're going to talk about like water and ethanol, phase diagrams of water and ethanol. Uh, there's some constraints of phases. That's why we have lines between things. All right, so, so again, the, the question. Is the critical region equivalent to the plasma region? No. No. Thank you want to run up and fix this? I will after. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's fine. I think I owe you. No, critical is not plasma. Crit remember, I was saying critical is like um, it's, it's it's like a linear combination of liquid and gas, and so it, it's completely weird. It's its own phase. A lot of people, not so much lately, but a lot of people studied fundamental properties of supercritical liquids, just like as research. Now, now plasma is when you're about a thousand miles to the right. Um, that's when um, things are so hot that they can't hold, atoms can't hold on to their electrons anymore. So yeah, that's I mean that is its own phase, but we don't really consider that in chemistry. That's like we 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 take that stuff and give it to physicists because you can't form chemical bonds, and if you can't form chemical bonds, then in chemistry we just we take that away. Uh, other, other question? Yeah. So then the gas liquid line can that ever curve down? Uh, I don't believe so, no, because then um, if you recall the equation for the gas liquid line, there's the enthalpy, and so it would curve down if, if boiling a liquid released heat. Right? Now, I don't, I mean, I don't know. No. Yeah, it's not going to happen, right? I mean, you know, the, the thing that's kind of interesting, and we're going to go over some of this today, you can find materials or combination of materials that will behave badly. Uh, I don't think you're ever going to find that one. So, just like, um, is there more than one gas? I mean, here's here's the question: Is there more than one gas phase? Now, I talked about there is more than one solid phase. You know that was the thing is I thought I didn't. You engineers don't take in organic. You, you don't. I had no idea. I thought you took in organic, and so we, you cover solid phases in organic. I thought you had that. So anyway, um, but now what about a gas phase? Is there more than one gas phase? Of course, that's absurd. What about more than one liquid phase? Could there ever be more than one liquid phase? Yes. yes. Uh, all right, how, do you, how do you know that? So I remember reading in the book, but I forgot what it was. Yeah, it's, it's helium. Helium does something called a Bose-Einstein condensate. A uh, form of what's called a Bose-Einstein condensate. And what that is, is um, it's the same thing as when a wire is being a superconductor. It's the exact same thing, and it's a very quantum mechanical thing, and we'll cover that in 346. It's the only thing that has ever observed to follow two liquid phases. It's in it's a liquid phase, and then it's like its superconductivity phase. And uh, so it, it's so rare, and it's the only example. I don't cover it because it's, it'd be kind of weird to talk about the one thing that does the one thing weird. Um, what's kind of cool about it, the equivalent to superconduction for, uh, for helium, again, the only thing that does it, is that if you could get a, a, a bowl, um, a, a tub of, a, of, of this liquid helium in this, in this phase, this uh, Bose-Einstein phase, and you put a little boat on it and you were to push it, it would go on forever, right? And you can kind of see it, so there's no friction. You can kind of see how that's analogous to superconductivity, so it's the same idea. That's the same facet of uh, the properties of that. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, in, any other questions before we move radically on? Um, okay, so, so we're going to do multi-component and um, uh, so, uh, multi-component uh, phase diagrams. Why I actually I I'd stopped covering this, but I wanted to bring it back because I when I was looking at this, I saw some new things. It really helps understand the Gibbs phase rule. Gibbs, Gibbs phase rule for one component is as fun as uh, watching lemonade melt. Uh, so I, I realized that when you add a component, you actually see a little bit more things going on and it's a little bit more helpful. Okay, so what I'm going to do, so I decided to cover it again. 
So what we're going to do, and, and as always, I won't use a, such a generic example uh, that we tend to use, just like for colligative properties. Let's just do salt water. For this, let's just do water ethanol. Let's just decide it's water ethanol. And everything else you could come up with is basically going to be the same. All right, now what happens is, and a lot of you got this uh, right last time, uh, what you're going to have is uh, um, areas turn into um, to volumes and um, yeah there you go you, you kind of uh, I do that a little cockeyed but so you kind of see that a little bit I didn't draw that super well but anyway so it's coming at you right now so much better if I anyway so so uh, so areas turn into volumes lines are now areas and, and yada 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 I guess the triple points now a line so okay so so what about that uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do vapor, vapor liquid. Again, we're going to do water ethanol. And, um, and let me just tell you what we're going to find. Let me cut to the chase. What it's going to do is something kind of cool. Let's, um, uh, let, let me just wipe this out and go back to a uh, single component. Um, and, and let me also, I remember during office hours something came up and I realized I have a way of explaining some things that I didn't use in class. Uh, so we're going to do liquid a vapor. So let's, let's get a liquid and turn it into a vapor. Uh, and we'll, we'll do that by depressurizing it. So we'll have water at um, room temperature. And if I go, if I uh, put it in a little chamber and I, and I attach a vacuum pump to it, it will turn into a vapor if I lower the pressure enough. Who knows what that pressure is? I've actually said it a couple times. It's a specific number, but maybe some of you remember. All right, what about the pure partial pressure of water? Remember what that is? It's 3,200 pascals. Remember I've said that a couple times? It's burned in my memory, but I do it for a living. Yeah, 3,200 pascals. Now, what happens if I have a cup of water in a little chamber and I reduce the pressure below 3,200 pascals? Turn into gas. Yeah, right. It just it just vaporizes, it, it, and it would you know if you look inside of it, it would actually look like it's boiling because it is boiling. It would look the same. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the pressure being lower and being hot. It's the exact same thing. Okay, and it happens all of a sudden. Okay, now here's the cool thing. And again, I'm, I'm actually going to tell you the end, and I don't know if I should do this. It's just kind of neat. What happens is if this line is now an area there's no more sharp boiling point for temperature or pressure. So what happens is, is that instead of all of a sudden, you know, I'm blowing the pressure and snap, it goes from liquid to gas. Remember, we're talking equilibrium. So I know it would take a finite amount of time, but, you know, liquid to, to gas. What would happen is, if we have a mixture, you can hit a pressure and it'll start to vaporize, but it won't completely vaporize. You'll have an equilibrium, of liquid and gas. Now just, just like you can have an equilibrium of liquid and gas, it's just at a really well-defined point. That's no longer true if you have a mixture. And what's happening is, if I have, again, let's do water ethanol. What do you think? If I, okay, I have a cup in a chamber and I start depressurizing it. What starts to boil off first? Ethanol. ethanol. Don't you think, I mean, right? Don't you think? I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. Okay. And then it'll stop. Now the vapor is, the vapor would have mostly ethanol, but probably some water. And the liquid would have mostly water, water and ethanol, because it was mostly water with some ethanol because most of the ethanol boiled off. Now you can depressurize it some more. And guess what? You still have a liquid vapor equilibrium. You see, you can mess with it. You can vary the property, you can vary the pressure, and you'll still have an equilibrium, but it won't be like this absolute, like, you know, binary on-off. And if you depressurize it, what happens is more water just comes off. And uh, the vapor becomes more water rich and the, the liquid less so. So anyway, that's, that's, that's what a binary phase diagram, and that comes about because, you see, to maintain the equilibrium, whereas in single component you have one degree freedom, in multi-component you have two. And that's what that means, is that if I depressurize a mixture, it won't suddenly turn from liquid to gas in the blink of an eye. It'll do so over a range. Uh, okay, so anyway, so that's the big picture. Now, that's, that's a long wordy description, so let's start doing mathematical 
you know what, and I'll stick with B as, as kind of the solvent. And of course, uh, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stipulate that, I know I'm being a little generic here, and I said it would be water and ethanol, um, but still though, I'll, I'll still call it A and B, there's a pure partial pressure. So it looks like B has a, a higher uh, partial pressure um, than A, and I guess that would, that would make B ethanol and A would be water. A, um, ethanol would have a higher vapor pressure than uh, water because you can smell it off people. Um, okay, so what happens is, um, okay, we're going to assume ideal, uh, and that's one reason not to use water and ethanol as an example, because it's not ideal, but still, I'm just going to do it anyway. And that means that we follow Reynolds' law. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to relate the composition of the liquid to the vapor. Okay, and so what does that mean? That means that the pressure is the partial pressure of, what did I say A was water? Uh, partial pressure of ethanol, and that will be, um, now here's, a, we're going to just start kind of making up equations that make sense, phenomenological ones. These are derivable. I, I won't bother because they're really sensible. Uh, so what, what do I do? I got, so I'm going to put things in terms of the mole fraction of B. Now this is, it, this is kind of funny how this works. Again, at first, at first you may be kind of like looking at this like, oh, what, what, where the heck did I come up with this? But just follow it. Just follow it, right? Okay, if the mole fraction of B, what, what is that, ethanol again? Okay, if there's no uh, ethanol, then the, part, the pressure is just the pure partial pressure of, of water. If the mole fraction of ethanol is 1, then you see the pure partial pressure, pure partial pressure of water is eliminated, and then you just got the pure partial pressure. God, this is hard. Pure partial pressure of ethanol, what? right? See, it's just this. It's just it's just a lot, right? I just threw, I just created an equation for life. It doesn't actually work that way, especially for water ethanol, because it's not really ideal. But we're just going to follow that. Okay, so then we draw a line. Okay, now I was just blown about how there's a degree. <laughs> um, I was just channeling, what's his name, Watto in, uh, in the uh, first Star Wars. Anyway, um, okay, so if I have pure water, now remember what I was saying. Uh, okay, high pressure, this is the liquid phase. Low pressure, this is the vapor phase. And here's my point. Again, if I have pure water and I depressurize it, we're going to go from liquid to, to vapor. And, and BAMO, it's, it's absolute. We're above 3,200 pascals, it's a liquid. We're below 3,200 pascals, it's a vapor. Just off on. Now, ethanol is the same. And I, I don't actually know what it's uh, pure partial pressure is. I should have looked it up, but, but whatever. Off on. Now, what happens is, in this in-between space, zero and one, in this in-between space, I picked up a degree of freedom. Because, it, you know, Pure, pure, but in between, not pure. That means I've now got a degree of freedom. And again, here's my here's my point. And, and I'm going to prove this mathematically. The there is no longer a line, but an area. No longer a line, but a region. Not one degree of freedom, which is a line, but two degrees of freedom, which is an area. And in this area, you got vapor plus liquid. So now again, hopefully you see what I'm saying here a little bit more. Uh, what you do is, you can imagine going from the liquid, now, now normally, normally, uh, so, so I prepared the state here, normally when you, when you, if you're dropping pressure, like in my uh, little thought experiment of having a cup of now water and ethanol in a little chamber and I'm pulling vacuum, what happens is if you think that you cross the line, you think that you cross the line, now, now you've got all vapor. No, you wouldn't. It, it would like boil, but then it would stop. That's what would happen. You'd have some liquid and some vapor, right? So that's what happens when you enter here. And then you can still change the, the, the pressure. You can still change the pressure. It's just eventually you do get to a point where it does all vaporize. Because, again, that's sensible. So that's what that looks like. Now let me point out one last way. I, I was thinking about this, especially after flooding that home. I feel still really mad about that. Um, now a minute ago, a minute ago, I just drew this in three dimensions. And last time, last uh, Monday, a lot of you were able to, to say like, oh yeah, if, if this is two-dimensional, then three-dimensional, you know, this is an area, and three dimensions, that's a volume. 
It's not hard to imagine, and I drew, drew this coming at you. Yes, it's now a volume. Okay, but now this is the, uh, the, liquid, the liquid gas line, right? Okay, so it's like this, right? Now, now I'm asking you this. If this is coming at you, so I mean, my hand is this. Is it coming at you? Does it still look like a line? Doesn't it? Right? Now, you can intellectualize that this is an area. That's kind of easy to visualize in your mind, but this not so much. It's still coming at you. Okay, but do you, you, you see what I've done here? Um, pressure mole fraction. That's coming at you, but, but not here. You see what I did? I turned it 90 degrees. So let me do this, and now let me do this. Now do you see how it's an area? You see the finite, finite width, right? So that's like the top of my hand, and that's the bottom, bottom, top of my arm, bottom of my, bottom of my arm. So that's, again, that's how that works. So anyway, I thought this was kind of neat once I understood this a little bit better myself. And, um, and there you go, long description of how this works. I've done the, uh, the, um, the liquid line, and now I'm going to do the vapor line. So now, the only thing that's hard about these questions, and I do have some on the homework, and I'll put some on the test three, is when I throw one of these at you is being able to interpret it. Um, Knowing what, what, I, what I'll do, what I'll do is I'll give you one of these and say, hey, just tell me what's on it. You should know. Now, I have to tell you things like, oh, it's a liquid vapor. At high pressure, liquid or vapor? Liquid, liquid right? Think of, the, think of it as the, the atmosphere pushing down. Remember, this is the external pressure. This is the pressure pushing down on the vapor. That liquefies it. But then, if the vapor pressure of the liquid matches atmospheric pressure when you, when you get here, the liquid can now push back. And so it'll enter the gas phase. And that's kind of what a pure partial pressure is, right? That's the pressure that the liquid is trying to push against the atmosphere. It's just too weak. But when the partial pressure, like water, at 100 degrees and one bar pressure, its partial pressure is one bar. And now it can push with equal force against the atmosphere. And that's why it vaporizes. Um, OK, anyway. All right, now what I want to do here is uh, just use some mathematics to describe this line. Right now, this is hypothetical. Um, I, I, I hopefully have convinced you that this is true, but I kind of feel obliged to just continue on uh, describing this. Um, I don't really think I'm going to do much with this. This is uh, oddly a little, a little difficult. Um, actually, actually, let me scratch that. Let me point out that what I've done is I've used Rayleigh's law to derive uh, pressure of the vapor versus the mole fraction of the liquid. Don't forget that. That's the mole fraction of the liquid. But the mole fraction of the liquid, what about the mole fraction of the vapor? Okay, so let's think about the vapor. Actually, let me write this down. So mole fractions, mole fractions we have A and B. Of course, uh, B is equal to 1 minus A. And this is in the liquid. Now what I'm going to do, see, I have to define that of the gas phase. And of course, the uh, mole fraction of B is just mole fraction, mole fraction of A, and that's in the vapor, the vapor state. Okay. Now, what what that matters is uh, let's consider the mole fraction of B. And again, I'm just going to make something up that makes sense using, and actually using Raynaud's law. So, for example, the the partial pressure of B is uh, the mole. Sorry, mole fraction of B is the partial pressure of B divided by the total pressure. Okay, the partial pressure of B, again using Rayleigh's law, so remember I'm using Rayleigh's law, would be the mole fraction in the liquid phase times the pure partial pressure. Rayleigh's law, that, that is Rayleigh's law. And now the total pressure, I've actually defined right here. All right, so I'm just going to write that down again. Okay, that ends up being C A star. Um, again, these are these are derivable, and I've derived them in class before. But I looked at these, and I realized I don't really need to because you can just look at them and figure out that yeah, this is right. And in this case, um, yeah. So so if, if the mole fraction of B is zero, um, then um, the, what the heck do you? Um, wait, is this right? Um, now I'm confused. Oh, anyway, tell you what. Let me um, let me point out if partial pressure of B is equal to the partial pressure of A. What you've got is a graph that looks like this. 
I, I want to point out how, yeah, here's, here's my point. I want to point out how mole fraction in the liquid phase is related to mole fraction in the gas phase. And again, I'm using Rayleigh's law. This, this actually gets me a little flummoxed sometimes. Um, okay, if the mole fraction of B is zero, then there's no B at all. I never added, I never added any ethanol to the cup, so I don't detect anything. Uh, now, if I add a cup of pure ethanol, then of course I should get a, a mole fraction of one. So what I've done in here is I've predicted a line. And that's if uh, the partial pressures of water and ethanol are the same. They're not, but I just said they were the same for the hell of it. Professor? Uh huh. On that diagram on the right, you said XB is the mole fraction of liquid, but isn't that just the mole fraction of the B component? Yeah, yeah, the, the, the B. But, re but remember, this tells you everything, because A is 1 minus that. No, so, I mean, but that's not for liquid only, that's just the regular mole fraction, correct? Um, wait, I, but, so mole fraction of liquid. And technically component B, but but A is one minus that. So this is all this is all the information. If I'm doing two components, this is everything you need to know can be expressed in just the mole fraction of one of the components. I just put B because I go from no, B. Yeah, but it's not the mole fraction of liquid in B. It's just the mole fraction of B. It's the mole fraction of B in the liquid. And yeah. The liquid. Okay. I mean, the, yeah. There's 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 nothing else. There's nothing. So you said something about the mole fraction in the liquid, but yes. All right, ask me after. Ask me after if you're doing this. That happens to me too, right? You see that happen. Okay, so now what happens here is, uh, now this is, this is kind of vanilla. This is what you would predict, but, but now let me show you something else. This is kind of cool. And it looks like I'm doing Tetris again with the, um, looks like I'm doing Tetris with the uh, board again. Let's say that the mole fraction of B is higher than A. I'm oh, sorry, the, oh, God, the partial pressure of, of, of B is greater than A, like I've been doing for this. Uh, uh, okay, what? Sorry, this is a quick question. So for XB, can you use YB then, since X and no, Y no, are the same? No, 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 no hold, hold on. You hold just on. define that as a liquid mole fraction. No, 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 hold on. You're making a big mistake here. That is the liquid fraction. That's the liquid fraction. It may, it may equal. All right, so so what you what you've got here? Yeah, if you derive this, let's let's make, let's make these equal. Um, Isn't that mole fraction? I think uh, it's just the mole fraction for that, right? No, in this case, the mole fraction of B is equal to the mole fraction, and the gas is equal to that of the liquid. Right? That that's what you're saying. Right? That that this this can be the liquid or the gas. This yeah, mole fraction. If it's the total mole fraction, right? This is the mole fraction in the liquid. So they're, they're, the total mole fraction is one, right? If you're going to add mole fraction A and B, it's one. This is the mole fraction in the liquid. Now, now this is really crucial, by the way. I'm glad you're asking. This is really crucial. This is not necessarily the mole fraction in the vapor, despite the fact that we're using Newton's <coughs> law. And, and here's how. Here's what happens. Now, it is in this case. You're thinking here, like, well, well, hold on, you know, that's the, that's the liquid, that's the gas. In this case, but not. In <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to forgive me for messing up the homework at this point. <laughs> Seriously. Um. <laughs> okay, now, now I'm just I'm just drawing a dotted line from where this used to be. But if the pure partial pressure of B is greater, then this SOB actually looks like this. Again, this is a mole fraction. Let, let, me, uh, let me wipe out some of this distracting stuff. Um, I got a weird... It's, uh, um, Let's see here. If I, I still think I made a mistake here. Did I make a mistake here? I think this should be B, right? Yeah. Have a mole fraction of B is one. If the mole fraction of B is one, um, no, 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 no. This is correct. This is correct. Now, now follow, follow along. Follow along. All right. If the mole fraction of B is one, then I've got. Chi B, PB star over, over PB star. 
Right, which, which would be the pure partial pressure. Um, so, so yeah, so that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, okay. All right, now, now here, here's to go back to that. Here, here's, here's the big, big picture. If in the limiting case of the partial pressures being equal, we get fairly simple behavior. But if one of the partial pressures, if the partial pressures are not equal, let's just make B greater than A. Just, we have to pick one. Let's make it B. Then what happens is the mole, frac mole fraction in the gas phase is greater than that in the liquid phase. And I'm still using Rayleigh's law. Now, again, this, if, if you're like, wait a minute, wait, wait, what? What's going on here? For one, the equation does it. Number two, but let's make it make sense <coughs> in a personal level. I have a cup of water, and I put ethanol and water in it. I have a cup, I put ethanol and water in it. If it starts to evaporate, what comes off first? Ethanol. Right, ethanol, which has a higher partial, partial pressure, pressure, pure partial pressure, right? Makes sense, exactly, it makes sense. So, and this is all using Rayleigh's law. So, uh, we're taking Rayleigh's law and actually kind of, it kind of like makes me kind of go, wait, what? Because it doesn't feel like Rayleigh's law, where, where, where the composition of the liquid was the composition of the gas. Um, and when I'm still using Rayleigh's law and yet I'm, I'm doing this because what, what I had never really done was, I had never actually separately Define the mole fraction of the gas. Have you ever? Have, did we talk about mole fraction of the gas? Right. We always talked about mole fraction of the liquid, and then we related it to the partial pressure, but not the mole fraction. You see, I've actually not talked about this yet. Now that I am, you're seeing weird behavior. So, okay. Now, now let's back up and, and talk um, and, and make another little little leap here. If this is the case, then. I can't use this, this graph that I just deleted uh, to represent everything. And now let me, let me make that clear by, um, by going a, a little bit further here. And uh, bum, 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 bum. so, okay, now I'm going to write down the pressure. Okay, before what I wrote down, that was the pressure based on mole fractions of the liquid. Now I'm going to do the pressure is based on mole fractions in the vapor. And it won't be the same. That's the part that's like crazy. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to uh, again do this by a phenomenological model. Just I, I promise this makes sense. You know, I've been a little, I've been staring at that guy because it still bothers me for some weird reason. Uh, now this again, <coughs> to derive this from what we've already done is really painful, uh, and I've done it in class before, and it can take about 20 minutes. But you can also just look at it. And, and understand that actually it makes sense. They always have these mole fractions of, you know, A minus B. Uh, see, I, I said B and so then I wrote a B. Okay, so let's just stare at this and let's we'll see if it makes sense. Okay, if the mole fraction of B is zero, then the pressure is the pure partial pressure of A. You see that? The B's cancel. Okay, if the mole fraction of B is one, then I'm left with partial pressure of A on bottom. So if the mole fraction of B is one, the, the pressure is a pure partial pressure of B. So again, this, all of this is derivable. I'm, I'm actually not doing the derivations, but it's all really straightforward. And it all just makes sense. All right, now what this does, let me, uh, now I have to go back and draw this graph again. Okay, now, 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 now this is the part, you gotta pay real, real close attention to this. It's gonna seem like, not anything, but I swear to God, this is horribly important. Okay, I've written mole fraction in the liquid state. And I have already done this. I, I, I am redrawing what I've already drawn. And there's nothing to it. I'm going to draw a line between the two, which is Rayleigh's law. Rayleigh's law talks about the liquid phase mole fraction. We have never talked about the gas phase mole fraction. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another graph, but I'm going to put that graph on top of this one. Two graphs, think of them like, you know, like, like, like clear paper. Um, the overhead stuff, anyway. Okay, so now, oh, wait, 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 am I doing A? No, sorry, I meant to put B. I'm, I'm trying to do things in B, because I used to call it B a solid. Sorry about that. Um, that doesn't actually matter. One, one's one minus the other. Um, okay, now I'm going to put 
the same pressure as a mole fraction would be. And the damnedest thing is, when, when the partial pressures are equal like this, you actually get this behavior. Now, they begin and end at the pure partial pressure, because that's crazy. I mean, it has to do that. I mean, that'd be crazy if it didn't. But it goes downward. Right. Now, again, what you have here is this two graphs. Don't forget that. If you want to lose not too many points on the exam, forget that. Or don't. And keep your point. What you've got to remember when you interpret these is that I put two graphs directly on top of each other. And then you have to interpret it correctly. So if I start here, this is uh, the liquid phase. I've got liquid water and ethanol. Now what happens is, as I drop it down, the liquid, um, and, and, and so, so if I know that at high pressure I have all liquid, it's trivial to know that the next area is the liquid and vapor part. And if I depressurize it further, I'll have all, all vapor. Okay, so we've already gotten seven out of ten points. That's how this works. Okay, now, what happens when you cross the graph as a function of liquid composition, what you're seeing is it starts to vaporize. But because you actually have a degree of freedom, it doesn't completely vaporize because that's the next boundary. The next boundary is when the vapor pressure of A and B equal the total pressure, which only happens when it's completely evaporated. Right, so, so you see again, you cross this threshold, and what happens is uh, you start getting evaporation, but it's just not complete. It's not complete because the partial pressures of the vapor are still not, they don't have enough oomph over the exterior pressure to completely evaporate, which does occur if the, if the exterior pressure drops a bit, and, and so then, then, it, then it can all evaporate, and there you go. Now let me explain the whole thing again another way. We'll drop down here. The liquid phase, now I drop the pressure. What happens is the ethanol starts to evaporate first. And it evaporates and evaporates and evaporates until all the um, chamber is filled with all the gas it can hold. Some water evaporated too, just not too much. If I, and so when we're at equilibrium, I can lower the pressure further. And what would happen is actually some water would start to evaporate to fill up the new space that got opened up when I pulled, when I dropped the pressure down. And then if I keep doing that and keep doing that, well then there's enough room for all the liquid to evaporate. That's the degree of freedom working for you. That one of the components can evaporate first and heat equilibrium, and then you can go further because then the other guy kicks in. That's, a, that's the degree of freedom. That's the degree of freedom that means that you don't have this sharp binary liquid and gas that you do for one component that, that you do you have when you have two. That's the degree of freedom working for you to actually kind of blur out this, this phase transition. So, um, yeah, you kind of follow that. I, I actually said the same thing like three or four times. Um, All right, last bit about this stuff. Okay, so I've, I've drawn this with no labels. We've gone pretty far with it. You're at about a 70 out of, 7 out of 10. But then I'm going to ask you to describe the composition at this point. Again, this is a real easy game. What you do is go to the right and go to the left. What happens is this, uh, then, then, uh, then look down here and look down here. Let me, uh, let me just wipe that out. Because uh, those are the, the, the points I'm going. Okay, then, then you go down here. What you've got is the x-axis. The problem is there's two of them that are directly on top of each other. They report the composition of the liquid and vapor, but you've got to figure out which one it is. So again, I tell you that I started this pure liquid uh, water and ethanol in a cup, and I pulled vacuum until I got a vapor. The question is, what is the composition of the vapor in the liquid at that point? What is this one? Is this the vapor or the liquid? Vapor. Right, right, because it hit the vapor line. So, um, damn it, damn it, damn it, B. I keep doing B. And then, of course, that's, that's the composition of the liquid. Now, you see, again, the degree of freedom. Let me drop the line a little bit further down. 
what you see is that the composition of um, the composition of technically ethanol has dropped, and that means that the composition of, uh, of water has gone up, and likewise, likewise the composition of the liquid has um, uh, it's similar change to account to account for that. You, you see what I mean? So, so again, if I lower the pressure further. The ethanol, which was evaporating first, it, it eventually it, it doesn't have anything more to give, so the water kicks in. That's why the, uh, the mole fraction of the vapor phase uh, change. And then, of course, the liquid just basically mass balances. I, I, I usually don't even worry about that. It's kind of obvious at that point. Okay, and of course, if you go low enough, everything evaporates. That is 100% how you do this. It's kind of a game. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, and it's kind of instructive as well. Well, very instructive about how Gibbs phase rule work, works. Huh? Question? What, what, what is that? Now remember, this is two. Uh, class, I am. It is me. Yes, it's me. I don't know. Sorry. God. I just keep. I guess I owe you a homework, don't I? Keep going back and forth. Any, any other questions? So, so again, this is actually, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of fun because it's relatively easy. Um, last bit. Last bit I want to go over is um, okay. There's there's another neat thing about this. Another neat thing. Let me let me just wipe this out and draw it again. And let me ask you um, ask you a question that's really kind of neat. I see if you folks can figure this out. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just redraw that. Redraw this thing and. Um, Here's A, here's B. Okay, so I drop us down to here, and you see the vapor composition and the liquid composition. What if I open it up and pour some water in? What happens? Change the composition. I didn't change the pressure. Now I want to point this out. I opened it up, I added some water, not, not much, right? it's not going crazy, I didn't fill it with water, all right? I added some water, but I didn't change the pressure. Now hold on one second, folks. This line changes composition if it goes up or down, but I didn't let it go up or down. I had the same pressure. So some of your water will There you go. That's right, the compositions are the same. The compositions are the same, but what happens is you actually just get a rebalancing between uh, vapor and gas. So like if I add more water and the, um, and the water is like richer in one of the phases, you'll get more of that phase to, to account for it. So again, if you pour water into the liquid phase, in the liquid phase, water content's too high, the water will just evaporate and you'll get more vapor. So, um, a, a trick question, but the way out of that, because I'll probably have to put that on the test because it's kind of too good to not put on the test. Again, if I mess with the composition but not the pressure, I can't actually mess with the composition. I don't have that degree of freedom. Right, let's, let's, let's do degrees of freedom. Uh, uh, two plus C minus P. Okay, I've got two. Plus two again because I've got uh, I've got uh, water and ethanol, and I've got two phases. This is the two phase review. That's two. What are what are the two What are the two degrees of freedom? Well, well pressure is one. Let me just be able to tell you pressure is one. See, I can still mess with pressure. What's the other one? It's at, no, no, hold on. So there's pressure, temperature. I'm not drawing temperature because I can't do this in three dimensions again. Pressure, temperature, and mole fraction. One of them is eliminated. Because there's only two degrees of freedom. Which one is it? Notice it's the one we've been talking about the last two or three minutes. What, what again? It's composition. The degrees of freedom are pressure and temperature, not composition. Composition is eliminated. So again, again, even if I poured water into the cup, the composition, and I hold the pressure constant, the compositions are the same. This is still the mole fraction 
of the um, had to check whether I was writing an A or a B. That's still the mole fraction of the liquid, and that's still the mole fraction in the vapor. It doesn't change. The only thing that can change is the relative amounts of vapor and liquid. And that actually, uh, because one of them is richer in the water phase, uh, and so it'll, it'll just, anyway, yeah, it just balances between how much water and vapor. But it doesn't mess up the composition. And that's because you only have pressure and temperature. A mole fraction is taken off the table once you, once you um, yeah, once, once you're in a two-component phase diagram. So there you go. That's how all this stuff works. So, so two things to remember. One is how these phase diagrams work. Uh, and just logically label, just, you just want to logically follow, okay, that's liquid, uh, that would be all vapor, and then the in-between would be liquid and vapor. It's very simple. The other thing to do is be able to map uh, uh, what's what I'm remembering that I have two graphs and now the way to remember that is if you move to the, to the, to the liquid line that's the liquid composition if you move to the right to the vapor line then that's the vapor composition I, that's not that hard the tricky thing is is what I just said hey what happens when I add more and we just walked our way through that and why and why the, the answer is the dip space rule you don't have that degree of freedom okay kind of neat eh, interesting sort of not too mathematical, more graphical. You can turn some graphical. Most classes are graphical. You guys are. Uh, that's okay. I've actually tried to avoid graphs, but I'm going to have a couple on this test three. All right. Now let me point out. Um, let me let me just go over another neat thing. Uh, let me just show you what temperature composition looks like. Temperature composition is kind of neat. Now I'm not going to do any math on this one. I'm just going to draw it. And um, we'll still have, um, let's see if we can just follow all those rules that we have. So this will st still be the pure partial pressure of B. This will be the pure partial pressure of A. Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 okay, I gave you this. I told you it's vapor liquid. I told you temperature and mole fractions. What's this? What, what did I just I said pressure? What is this? Temperature. Temperature of boiling B. Right, there you go. Temperature of boiling A. Okay. Liquid vapor. What is it? Now, is it either going to be all liquid or all vapor? Because it's in the, it's, it's vapor. in the it's vapor. Vapor. vapor, right? Because it's hot, right? It switches, and then this is vapor. Okay, so I start in a liquid phase. I go up. I look right, left. Let's do this one. Is this X or Y? Y. Right, it's Y. Gas. Okay, now let me point out something else that's kind of cool about this. Um, let's say that I could take the vapor. Let's take this. Let's take the vapor and condense it. It would have this composition. If I then took that vapor, that liquid, and I vaporized it again, and then let it condense, and then vaporize it again, You see how I could um, purify? You see how I could purify this liquid by vaporizing it, capturing the A, it's laden with A, not much B, condense it, vaporize, condense it, vaporize. You see how I'm getting the, I'm following the vapor line this way? So do it in stages. What is that? So add, like, uh, what do they call it? Like effective. Hold on, I think you've seen this before. <laughs> Does this look familiar? It's a yeah, I'm describing distillation. Right, so what happens is in distillation, when you're, uh, <laughs> I think we're out of time. Uh, what happens is, as the vapors condense on the little parts, they re-vaporize, and re-vapor, uh, vaporize, recondense, vaporize, recondense. And what you're doing is you're following the line down, and slowly purifying the B out of the A, so it's that only vapor A comes out of the uh, out of the top. Anyway, that's how distillation works. All right.